The Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. But this runs basically, it says. A handful of scientists gather to test their robot. It should be able to place the items down in the box on the floor. It doesn't look so difficult, but this is the road into the world of science fiction. Once we have robots that can do things we humans do on a daily basis, these robotic systems can take over some of the jobs that are potentially dangerous for humans. Such as working in big chemical companies. They can help with things that are boring for humans, such as, for example, helping in a food store to put things um, in shelves, or do things that in some way um, uh, destroy our bodies, such as, for example, helping nurses in um, uh, hospitals uh, to change uh, bed clothes, or helping them to lift somebody that cannot move from a bed. People will continue to come in uh, as we speak. Yeah, I think we should. But be three, four minutes after. One May morning in Stockholm city, a conference center is waiting to be filled. Come on, come closer, come closer, come closer. Researchers from around the world are gathering here to talk about robots. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Stockholm. My name is Danica Kragic, and I am the general chair of the SciCra. Danica Kragic Jensfeld wants to help robots take their place among us. She was born in Croatia, studied mechanical engineering and mathematics, and worked as a model. But then she chose the life of a scientist. No, I, I try to understand what the finger is doing, yeah. Oh, no. This is a firm handshake. <laughs> <laughs> she took detours via several top universities in the U.S., but always while keeping the Royal Institute as her home base. And by doing so, she has now made it to the world's absolute top tier in robot research. Today, she is the one who is leading this, the world's largest conference on robotics. Uh, potentially, this platform would be used to uh, test entrainment. So how a human and the robot hold something together and how the robot basically gets uh, in train. But this is not what you're doing. But the key steps toward getting the robots to function as part of our everyday lives, they are taken far away from the city's conference centers. And the robots used on the research fronts may not always look like the coolest objects. However, under the hood, they may nevertheless be the most advanced. The robot which is training here will participate in a worldwide competition which will soon be held in Germany. You could call it the World Cup in the packing of books. And a large internet company is behind the whole event. And this is all really difficult because our world is shaped around us. It's made for humans. May I take your hat and coat? So to do a simple task, like taking down a book, the robot must see things the way we see them, make decisions like us. The term fun is meaningless to a robot, sir. And move like we do. The first problem is then to understand what is what. Danica usually shows an example using her own daughter. Uh, Isabel here, one and a half years, she has understood the shape of a chair, but not yet the function of a chair. So the chair is too small for her to sit on and she will need or her brain still some time to understand that through experience. In the same way as we program robots, we need to teach them that shape and function need to fulfill uh, certain requirements that we humans have. Here, we want the robots to learn how to distinguish boxes of books from other square objects. 
Humans can do this easily because we have been training with this sort of thing subconsciously throughout our entire childhood. But to write down this know-how as programmable code is difficult. Then the actual movement itself is prepared. With two cameras, human vision and distance determination can be replicated. And with advanced mathematics and programming, the robot can then stretch out its hand in real 3D. And then it is time for the almost impossible. A very simple example that we humans do almost without thinking is to uh, manipulate keys. So you need to pick them up, you need to move them in your hands in order to be able to actually hold the key so to open the door. And here we use the fine motions of the fingers but also um, um, uh, upper body motion. And this is something that is very difficult for robots to do today. At the conference, it is clear that motor skills is one of the biggest mountains to climb for robotics. In almost every booth, the hand and movement is the center of focus. And then I wait just 10 seconds for an answer. The thing is that if I call for an object that... Uh, no, this is just the a connection. What's the object you're looking for? So now it doesn't make sense. Okay. 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 And now it will be put to the test, a combination of those abilities under development. The robot has to be able to look and decide which object is the right one to grab. Must determine exactly where that thing is. And then, the hard part. To grasp it with a human-like motion to set the item in its box. Robots performing and helping us with our daily business, helping with the um, dishwasher, for example, or robots in hospitals that can, uh, that can help nurses. We'll see prototypes being used during the next coming 10 years period. Robots that can be then bought uh, in a regular uh, store, uh, well, that's going to take a little bit longer time. <laughs> It works, everybody.